Kick ass facts. Boo 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 boo. Male dragonflies try to seize and mate with a female with or without her consent. A lot of the females don't care for that. For the first time, a scientist has observed that the female moorland hawker dragonfly freezes in midair, crashes to the ground, and then lies motionless when faced with an aggressive male. Called sexual death feigning, this behavior evolved to protect females against aggressive males. Female moorland hawker dragonflies, that's a mouthful, risk injury and sometimes death if coerced into mating. More than 60% of the females he observed escaped after deceiving the chasing males. We can learn a lot from nature. But they're not the only ones who do it. Five species, including a spider and praying mantis, are also known to practice sexual death feigning. The male nursery rub spider displays death feigning behavior as part of the courtship prior to mating with potentially cannibalistic females. Once again, we can learn a lot. Males of the species offer a nuptial gift to potential female mates. A nuptial gift is a nutritional gift. I also accept nutritional gifts. After presenting the gift to the female, she bites onto the gift and the male moves into position. Throughout copulation, the male keeps a leg on the gift to be ready if she tries to escape with it or attack him. This is when he might feign death. His limbs become straight and he is dragged along with the female while she is holding onto the gift. When the female stops, the male slowly resurrects and continues attempting to mate. This has increased the male's odds of successfully copulating from less than 30% to 89%. This is from a Portuguese people. It took me 49 years, literally like three weeks ago, to finally click that the days of the week in Portuguese are not named after planets. In Portuguese, weekdays start with ordinal numbers, second, third, fourth, etc. Monday is segunda feira, Tuesday is terça feira, quarta feira, quinta feira, sexta feira. The segunda, terça, etc. means second, third, fourth, and fifth, and feira means fair. Why? Back in the 7th century, a Portuguese bishop decided he didn't like that the weekdays were named after pagan gods, so he decided to make up his own. For him, Sunday was the first day of the week, which is why Monday, según the Fida, is second fair. What about the Fida part? Excellent question. The tradition of fairs in Portugal is as old as the country, and fairs were held during the week. Sunday and Saturday were considered holy days and are named accordingly. Sunday is Domingo, and the name has origins in Latin expression for Day of the Lord, and Saturday, Sabdu, corresponds to the Sabbath, and that's why it's named after it. Apparently the bishop also tried to rename the planets, but he was not successful. I appreciate that kind of confidence though, that kind of misplaced and misguided confidence. Norepinephrine, also known as noradrenaline, is a neurotransmitter that conveys the body's fight or flight response. It has been known to cause graying when injected into otherwise unstressed lab mice. Stress can turn your hair gray. Think about the last work email you sent. Did you use any exclamation points? If you did, chances are you're a woman. The authors of a journal of computer-mediated communication article concluded that the exclamation point isn't as much a marker of excitability as former research claims, but it is more about friendly interaction. 73% of exclamations were made by women and 26% by men. No one bats an eye if a man doesn't use an exclamation point, but a lot of management research has shown that if women use too few softeners like exclamation points, we're viewed as hard and unfeeling. If we use too many, we lack a gravitas and aren't taken seriously. So how, we got a Goldilocks this shit? How many is the right amount? Greek slave traders often bartered salt for slaves, giving rise to the expression, not worth their salt. Roman legionnaires were paid in salt, salarium, which is the Latin origin of the word salary. Bangs, also known as a fringe, depending on where you are, but bangs, the bane of my existence, because every few years I decide to get bangs in it. Bangs were worn by both men and women in ancient Egypt, ancient Greece, and in the Roman Empire. Hairstyles that included bangs can, seen on, can be seen on men and women in artwork of the Middle Ages. During the Elizabethan era and the Renaissance, European men continued to wear bangs, but they were out of style for women. Clergy cautioned against bangs in the 1600s as a sign of vanity and a slide into mortal sin.